It's Tuesday, January 25th, and the time for your Bobby yesterday morning news update. Prime Minister Mia Motley has proposed a constitutional amendment to allow an 18-year-old to serve in the Senate for the first time. In an address to the nation on Monday night in which she revealed her cabinet, the Prime Minister announced plans to appoint Bobby the scholar Khalil Koftiwala as a senator. During the election campaign, I made a promise, a serious promise to engage our young people and to bring them into the center of governance and national self-determination. It is in my view an anomaly that a person who is 18 years old in Barbados has the right to vote, but they do not have the capacity to serve in the Senate of our nation. It is therefore my intention to correct this by asking the Cabinet to agree and Parliament thereafter to bring a constitutional amendment to allow an 18-year-old to serve in the Senate of Barbados for the first time. I propose, should it be accepted and successful, that Senator Khalil Kothiwalda should be that person who will serve as a senator. I have said from the very beginning, if you're old enough to vote, then you must be old enough to serve. I look forward to the support of all across civil society for this fundamental change. The Prime Minister, whose Barbados Labour Party won all 30 seats in the country's parliament in last Wednesday's general election, also revealed that she would consult with the opposition parties that contested the poll on the appointment of two opposition senators. In 2018, faced with a similar election result of 30 nil in the lower house, I proposed then to offer to the opposition parties the opportunity to appoint the two senators despite not securing any seats at the polls. It is the intention of this government again to engage with the opposition parties which contested the last two elections to determine how best they may participate in the appointment of two opposition senators provided for in our constitution. I am equally awaiting a legal opinion from the Honorable Attorney General on this matter before we start those formal discussions with the opposition parties. Meanwhile, the young man tipped to become the island's youngest senator says he is humbled. Khalil Kofdiwala says while the Prime Minister's announcement came as a surprise, he is ready to serve. I'm truly really humbled to have been asked by the Prime Minister to serve at this point in time in the capacity uh, which she has asked me to. I of course, it is not uh, official or anything yet. The, the necessary constitutional arrangements have to be made. But that if it be the will of the cabinet and the will of the parliament, um, and further to that, if it be accepted by Her Excellency, uh, and I do take the seat, I take it not for myself, uh, because it really isn't, it really isn't about me. Uh, I, I do it for all young people, and particularly those who are in that category of being the youngest of the young uh, at 18 and 19 and 20 and 21 and even um, of younger age who are often even more neglected than the other groups of young people and so I do it for them and I do it to be able to give voice and to be a physical manifestation of the fact that we as a group of people are equally deserving of representation at all levels and it is therefore visionary of the Prime Minister and her government at this time and I really extend my heartfelt gratitude not only again for myself but for all young people. Prime Minister Mia Motley's remodeling of her cabinet has been done to enhance governance. That's the view of political scientist Dr. George Bell, who believes Motley's changes have been influenced by her first term in office. The Prime Minister announced her new cabinet on Monday, naming Santia Bradshaw as Deputy Prime Minister and three other long-standing members of the Barbados Labour Party as senior ministers. Dr. Bell said the Prime Minister's decision to reduce the size of the cabinet also showed that she had been listening. I think that she has got a vocation to reflect, to reflect that so that the, the change is going to be the right of the core around herself in terms of administration of government by appointing the ministers and, and also to reward those people that are important to her maintaining. Uh, I've 
One of the Democratic Labour Party's veteran politicians who was defeated in last week's general election has left the door open to contesting the newly vacant post of party president. Former government minister Dr. David Estwick, who has served in various ministries, revealed on Monday that he had not made a final decision yet on whether to run for leadership of the party. Well, at this point in time, I just watch when the playing field only. And uh, it is best to do it that because I want to see what, 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 what mayor is going to do. Because the continuing playing the game of somebody leaving the government and going to opposition is foolishness. And, and it is best for her to decide you know, to, to, to execute an amendment to, to the Constitution and start speaking to proportional representation and make the amendments in regards to, you know, the governor with the, the president that would normally have uh, several persons nominated to the Senate. The, the, the opposition normally has to in respect to how many votes they got. So the best way to handle that would be to just make an amendment and this shift the what would normally be the allocation from the from the president over to the party with the next largest largest um, number of votes. And so that so that you can you can have a better balance and so on. So so I wanted to wait and see what she is going to do. Uh, unless we can follow the same role as, as someone like, as another person across on the floor just just for expediency. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. The news from the region, opposition parties in Guyana are calling for strict measures to be put in place to deal with the increase in COVID-19 cases. News Source Guyana has more in this report. Almost 18,000 persons have tested positive for COVID-19 since the start of January, representing the highest number of infections recorded since the pandemic came to Guyana in a single month. The country has also recorded 83 deaths since the start of this month, with 27 of those deaths confirmed in the past three days alone. The continuing spread of the virus across the country has triggered calls for the government to put systems in place to stem the spread. Over the weekend, political party A New and United Guyana urged the government to implement new measures to address the spread of COVID-19 cases. The party noted that while there has been no rapid increase in deaths, the increase in hospitalizations and spread remains a cause for concern. The main opposition, APNU-AFC, has also been calling for stricter measures for several weeks as the caseload continues to climb. The opposition has also roasted the government for restricting PCR testing at government health institutions, saying that move could result in a greater spread and people being unaware of their true status. The government has not reacted to the calls by the opposition parties. And finally, Acting Chief Executive Officer of the Global Partnership for Education, Charles Anoff, said the COVID-19 pandemic is leaving millions of poor and marginalized children behind. North made the comment as he spoke to journalists in New York on Monday in observance of International Day of Education. We cannot escape the fact that the pandemic is leaving millions of poor and marginalized children even farther behind. On this International Day of Education, the global community must do more before the COVID pandemic makes permanent the inexcusable gap between how much rich and poor children learn. In fact, the school closures from the pandemic may have a permanent impact on those vulnerable children. An estimated 24 million children may never see the inside of a classroom again. As many as 13 million girls could be forced into early marriage, their educations cut short as families struggle to bear the economic costs of the pandemic. 
education actors should use this moment to redouble all efforts to transform education systems so that even the most isolated or excluded children in our societies can learn. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.